Hey, whether you're new to America's finest city, born and raised here, our next guest has a list of 100 things to do in San Diego before you croak. Actually, before you die, he says it. But Mr. David Swanson, good morning. Good morning. Now you're joining us from San Diego. You're a native, born and raised. You're basically an expert on our finest city here, huh? Well, uh, who wouldn't want to explore their own uh, hometown? I'm jealous because, you know, I do my daily feature segments. So I'm always looking for things to do. And surprisingly, I think just when you think you know your city, there's something new to explore. Well, and that's certainly what I tried to do in the book, because the book is really designed both for people coming in from out of town. And of course, you want to tell them about the zoo and, and SeaWorld and the beaches. But it's also designed for people who live here in the city. And I hope that uh, people who live here or people who are new to the city find quite a few things in the book that they might not have known about. So how did you narrow the list down to 100? Because it seems like a big number, but not really in such a, a huge city. You know, it's it's hard. And, uh, you know, one of the things is, it's like you don't want to overrepresent something. So, uh, you know, there's a couple dozen restaurants in the book and it's like, OK, what one Mexican restaurant do you choose for the book? Do you choose something that's a, a local favorite? Do you choose something where you've got uh, the full on tourist appeal with mariachis and colorful costumes and so forth? Uh, and, and so you, you, there is, there's always these choices. And then also I wanted to get a good geographical spread. There's certain areas of the city that have a real concentration of things to do and, and real highlights. And then there's other parts of the city that you want to make sure, hmm, gee, this is a new and upcoming place. Uh, Barrio Logan would be a good example. Yeah. Ten years ago, I probably wouldn't have thought of Barrio Logan, but Barrio Logan is a very uh, popular area of the city to visit now. Have you been to Barrio Dog in Barrio Logan? I have been to Barrio Dog, yes. Oh, <laughs> Enjoyed it very much. Thank you. They have amazing hot dogs. So, you know, oh, obviously, yeah. right now, things are closed. Do you have on your list things that are open that you can share if people are looking for things to do now that, that are on this Absolutely. list? Absolutely. Absolutely. Of course, uh, dining at restaurants is outdoors only, and that does limit somewhat uh, what's available there. Uh, but, you know, one of my favorite places to go is Bread and Sea. Uh, it's a bakery in Hillcrest. It's been open more than 20 years now. Um, and it's, it's a place where European bread making is celebrated uh, with uh, fine sourdoughs. Uh, and uh, the, the bread is so good that you find it at dozens of restaurants around San Diego. But you can use the bakery and, and either pick up a loaf, you can dine outside there, or one of the things I like to do is pick up a picnic basket and take it to a beach or a park and enjoy it there. Oh yeah, that's probably one of my favorite things to do. Now you say it's a great time to hit the beach and run. I agree, but with the grunion, what does that mean? Uh, grunions are these uh, slippery little fish, these little tiny fish, uh, silver fish that uh, pop up uh, two nights before and after the full moon and the new moon in the spring and summer in Southern California and Northern Baja. It's something that's unique to this area. Um, and what happens is uh, late at night, 10, 11, midnight, they, uh, there'll be hundreds if not thousands of them that swarm up on the beaches and they're basically doing a mating dance and they ride and they wriggle in the sand and so forth. Uh, in the spring, you can't collect them. In the summer, you can collect them. And one of the things I remember from my childhood was we'd go out at 10, 30 or 11 at night and scoop up a pan full of them and fry them at home and serve them up with eggs at midnight, which was a lot of fun. So the granule runs, there's one coming up in about a week. I'm sorry, I didn't get the dates, but uh, there's, it's about a four night spread before and after the full and new moon each month. And that goes through about the beginning of September. Okay, is it stinky? Mm -hmm. Sorry, I just lost is you there. It, is it stinky? Are the grunions stinky? Stinky, you know, it's been a few years since I did it. I don't remember them being stinky, but oh, okay. they are full of flavor, I will say that. Okay. You eat the whole thing, fish, head and all. Yeah, <laughs> what is your favorite place to bike? Bike, um, well, I, I bike a lot all over the city. But one of my favorites is the Bayshore Bikeway. And this is something that's been developed over the last uh, six or eight years in San Diego. And it's a loop that goes all the way around uh, from um, the, the Coronado um, Ferry uh, Port, uh, on, actually on both sides. And almost the entire route, most of the route, more than three quarters of it, is dedicated bikeway. So there's no cars that you have to deal with. Oh, wow. And the neat thing is it's 24 miles, and that might be a bit too much for, for some people, but it's pretty much entirely flat the whole way. And one of the things I like is that if I'm, you know, kind of pooped out and not, not feeling like all 24 miles, if you do the, the route counterclockwise, starting from uh, the Coronado side and then looping around the bay, you can hop on the trolley to take the last leg back. Oh, into, there uh, you go, you little cheater, you. <laughs> okay, we do have to wrap, but I wanted to very, very quickly ask, you mentioned in your book a dive spot that's a bit of a wreck. 
Oh, it's a mess, let me tell you. Did you know that off the shores of Mission Beach, there is a graveyard of sunken ships? No! It's called Wreck Alley. Um, San Diego is mostly known for its kelp forests for divers, but uh, there's actually a 366-foot Canadian destroyer escort that sits just a, a less than a half mile offshore off the beach. And to give you an idea of the size, 366 feet is taller, is longer than the SeaWorld Tower is tall. So it's a, it's a massive wreck sitting under there, and divers can go down there. You've got to be experienced, of course. You've got to have a few dives under your belt. But this is uh, one of those uh, special things. And there's actually a couple other wrecks down there, including an old uh, uh, research tower that looks like a sunken oil rig. How cool is that? My producer caller is going to get mad because we're going long, but that was fascinating. David Swanson, third generation San Diegan, travel writer, photographer for the last 25 years. Buy his book, 100 Things to Do in San Diego Before You Die. Your website's been on the screen the entire time. So, David, thank you for spending Perfect. time with us this morning. Thank you. Yeah. Take care. Have a good one.